Well, all right. Uh, we're back. We are back. Uh, second sortie of the day. Uh, the Carbon Cub, the E-Flight Carbon Cub. Uh, I hope I have my camera cocked in a way that y'all can see the action. And if not, then you probably won't be seeing this video. <laughs> What would be the point in posting it if you can't see the action? All right, we got a 3700 6L in the aircraft. She's powered up, battery's checked out. All right, so left is left, right is right. Up is up and down is down. Left and right are also left and right. On that, control surface. All right, flaps, okay, cool. All right, hey, the winds have shifted, no joke. From the video that I just shot like five minutes ago, <laughs> it just shifted. As you can clearly see, the flag is going in the other way. Wow! Hey, uh, you know, uh, winter in the Mojave, right? Winter in the and now look, and now it's dead. I think it's probably dead because it's shifting. I don't know. Oh well. All right. Hey, she's a beast. So up she goes. Up she rises. All right, we're not gonna need flap, but uh, we're just gonna go a nice scale takeoff. That's what we're doing, scale. All right, so here we go. Scale takeoff, carbon, carbon Z Cub. Yes, sir, scale. Uh, I literally, and by the way, that was like 60% takeoff. There's no reason to horse this model off the ground. I mean, Besides fun. <laughs> I'm dead serious. Now, it's a lot of fun to horse a model off the ground, I must admit. <laughs> and this plane does it with the best of them. I mean, this plane will... This plane is an absolute beast. Kike, our friend Kike, look at that. Did you see that? No AS3X. That's, that's a bump right there. She's got a bump. Don't know if that was a thermal. Or wind, um, might be, it might have been wind. All right, and by, which, by the way, just shifted again, ladies and gentlemen, in esteemed CZC thread members, Joel and Bill and Gabe and Bert and all my buddies over there in CZC land. Look at her, man. she is just, I love it. It's awesome. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. Let's pull her up into a big old loop. And we're going to throttle down on the back side, let her come on down. About the same altitude that we started, I'll take it. I'll take it. Hopefully I'll take a landing. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> All right. So last video, uh, look at her. She's bumping, man. She is bumping. Yowza. All right. Uh, I call it 10, 20, 30. I got 10 percent expo here cutting through the wind up there there's some winds aloft not down where I'm at right now but up there so 10 percent on the rudder 20 percent on the aileron let's bring her on around nice little uh nice little hammerhead so 20 percent on the ailerons and 30 percent on the elevator to control pitch 10 20 30 it seems to be working I haven't adjusted it so eh, I don't know yeah she is really getting uh getting bumped it's kind of fun hey you know what as we say in the army uh it's good training I mean, really as we say and as as gabe would say by the way gabe i saw i was down in yuma yesterday saw a uh saw a dude flying a uh some kind of turboprop ag bird like you've got in your avatar holy cow man i gotta hand it to you brother you are a tree hopper boy i'll tell you what that dude was was low and just dirty man he was down in the dirt i couldn't believe i couldn't believe look at her getting bumped man let's get her up there nice and high before i bring her over because we're getting so bumped i don't want to you know have her low normally i'd have her nice and low doing my uh uh reverse half cubans but there's so much winds floating around now Ooh, i might have to land her but uh Oh yeah, she is getting. I still got five minutes though on this battery. I could probably fly her a little bit and talk to you all. Look at that. 
I could probably fly her a little bit while, uh, while maybe these winds will calm down, you know? Yeah, this is a really bumpy flight, and, and Brother Joel, I apologize. Ain't my fault, man. It's wind, dude. It is all wind. Okay, you throttle down for you younger pilots, newer pilots. You throttle down on the apex because uh, you don't want to overstress the frame. Now, this frame is just, just burly. It is straight up burly. We're gonna, we're gonna throw a caution to the wind, and uh, we're gonna bring her in because uh, it is just really. It is just really, uh, it is just really, wow, we may not, man. It is just straight up bad. <laughs> I had this happen to me about three weeks ago. I uh, sat on the carbon Z-cup thread. I was, I took off. Oh, God, I probably should have taken off. And uh, I took off, and boy, I'll tell you what, that was kind of a mistake because uh, I don't have a whole lot of room to work with. In case you haven't noticed out here, on, on the old on the old uh, on the old grass, I really don't. So you know what? We're gonna do what we're gonna do it first. Let me get her out of the sun. Right now I'm I'm right in the sun. Not good. By the way, another thing there, young RC pilots, don't put your planes in the sun. Don't do what just what you just did and put your planes in the sun. Now, I kind of know what the plane's doing, kind of sort of, because we got a lot of wind. But uh. If you don't, and you're not comfortable with your orientation and, you know, your throttle control and all that, that could be a bad thing. <laughs> it could end up badly. Uh, which, we're going to try to land around here. We're going to find a, a spot out here in the dirt. And I, hey, this is a first right now. This is a first. RC groups. I'm putting, I'm putting my plane in the dirt because we have an emergency situation going on. I still got two minutes, 45 seconds left. I got plenty of uh, throttle, or correction, plenty of juice left in the tank. But uh, you always want to leave juice in case you got to go around. So let me find a reasonably, you know, eh, reasonably good spot to put her down without so many rocks. You can see there's lots of rocks out here in the illustrious Fort Irwin driving range. And we're going to line her up, and we're going to put her down in the dirt. Hopefully in one piece. <laughs> Hopefully we don't drag a wingtip. All right. There's no flaps. I don't need them. I don't need them. All right. Don't need the flaps right now. I don't need the flaps. Holy cow, did you guys see that? <laughs> Praise the Lord and pass the ammunition. Did you see that? Okay, well you know what? That worked. That worked. As you can clearly see, the winds are doing pretty dang good. <laughs> I'll, I'll stick the anemometer up, but that flag is straight out. And, uh, yeah, so before we move the model, notice I'm covering the throttle. So I've set my timer off, I'm going to set my box down here in the dirt, and uh, we're going to unplug the model. Here's another thing, younger pilots, please notice, I am nowhere near this prop. I am nowhere near it, man. This thing scares the hell out of me, because check this out. I've got scars from an old, uh, from an old, uh, uh, fly zone focke wolf. And yes, I, I snipped away that, that little switch there. Thanks, Bill, by the way, Brother Bill. Hey, snip that, snip that away. I think Gabe was saying, or Bert was saying it too. Heck, a lot of guys are saying it. Hey, just snip that thing away and it basically, uh, well, what did you guys say? It opens the circuit? Anyways. So, yeah, so... I snipped that thing away too. Okay, so you, you make sure that you're nowhere near that prop. I don't know, fly zone uh, FW190 that I never even made and never, <laughs> never got that thing off the ground, man. Never got it off the ground. See that? See that? 
battery ain't going nowhere. Where's that battery going? Where's that battery going? That battery's going nowhere. All right, hey, I'm gonna haul this thing back. I appreciate you watching, and uh, kind of glad I got that landing on video. <laughs> Maybe I should fly when it's more windy. Anyways, hey, I'm gonna, look at that flag. You probably can't see it, but it, I'm telling you, gentlemen and, and, and ladies, yikes. <laughs> and we tested, we tested the, the dirt. And because of them bad, bad little uh, wheels right there, them big bad wheels, which, I mean, she wants to fly right now. Look at that. Uh, that's kind of windy. When your plane moves, whoa. When your model moves, yeah, it's windy. All right, I gotta go run and grab my canopy. <laughs> Talk to you later. canopy it is safe and sound all right hey again thanks for watching the adventures of just wing it on a windy day with the carbon z cub and now the winds are dying down flying in the mojave flying in the mojave you gotta love it hey thanks for watching and uh, we'll talk to y'all later All right, we are back, and we're taking some wind readings. I don't know if you can see this. Uh, it's pretty much 10 sustained, and I just got some some 14 gusts. Uh, there you go, 14.5, 13, 14, 5, and 14.9. So uh, yeah, that's that's what I just landed in. <laughs> Anyways. Hey, uh, yeah, so anyway, just got a 14.9, I don't know if you can see it or not, the winds are dying, see now they're going down, now they're going down, anyway, I hope you guys could, could see that, if not, trust me, there you go, there's 15, 8, 16, 17, we got ourselves 17, do I hear 17, 17, 2, dang, look at that flag, dang, all right, Hey, ladies and gentlemen of the Carbon, the illustrious E-Flight Carbon Z Cub uh, crowd, look at that flag. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you appreciate. <laughs> oh my God, what was I doing flying? Look at those trees. Oh, uh, just wing it. Yeah, yeah, that's what I did today. All right, just wing it. Hey younger uh, RC pilots as well I'm telling you if you got a carbon Z cub and you're all anxious yeah I gotta get this thing up in the air and yada 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 and it's your second or third plane which a lot of us are trying to steer you away from but hey if that's what you want if that's where you're at if that's your state of mind okay cool man I, I can pick that up picking up what you're laying down but I'm telling you what you stuff it it's on you okay <laughs> But here's your part, some, some, some tips for success though. Don't fly it on a day like this, okay? I've been moving sticks around since the late 70s. I had a little break in contact, as we say in the military, I had a break in contact and I came back to it. But you see, I had some muscle memory to start with. Actually, I had some muscle memory. It was a one channel plane I learned to fly on. One channel. <laughs> then I moved up into a two channel powerhouse. Saul Taibbi design, can't make it up. Free flight converted to two channel, rudder and elevator. Anyways, hey, don't fly in weather like this, okay? Wait for a calmer day. I recommend maybe five mile an hour, eight mile an hour. Um, I also recommend and encourage you to have somebody with you uh, that's experienced to help to help show you the way. Cause this, this model right here, yeah, it's a cub. I got it, it's a cub. But the funny thing is, People will tell you, Joel will tell you, Bill will tell you, Gabe, but all, there's a lot of folks out there with just gobs of experience. <clears throat> a lot of guys have some, a lot, a lot of full-time flight time. Cubs, you do realize Cubs don't make great trainers, right? You realize that, right? That the Cub design does not really make a good trainer. 
Just wing it. What are you talking about, man? You are nuts. No, I'm not. <laughs> it's a tail dragger. <clears throat> Bad news right from the get-go. By the way, that's why the military went to nose wheel configuration in the mid-40s. The first manifestation, one of the first manifestations of that being the venerable T-28 Trojan, which served for decades, right? Right? They went to nose wheel gear. The Germans did the 262. Why did they go nose, nose gear? Less pilot loss. With the, the steering portion of the aircraft behind the CG and all the weight in the rear, what does it make the aircraft do? It ground loops a lot easier. Despite how narrow or wide the landing gear is. Aircraft that are tail draggers have a tendency to ground loop because the weight on the steering surface is behind the CG. Number one. Number two, believe it or not, Cubs can tip stall. And <laughs> here's the tricky part about a Cub tip stalling. Okay? And there's a lot of guys that are gonna 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 back me on this. They don't warn. <laughs> a cub a cub and, and tip stall is kind of a misnomer. Okay, let's just say stall, alright? It manifests itself out here on the end because you lose aileron authority is what's going on. And then the aircraft will, will, will generally go into the torque or will torque over. So generally that means it's going to go onto the left. But you've lost aileron authority, right? Because the wing has stalled. And really, it's, it, it, you know, Tip stall's been, been called a misnomer, but it's used. In fact, it's even published in Navy flight pubs. The term tip stall actually appears. Okay, so let's go back to what happens with the Cub. Cubs don't warn you. And generally, when a Cub tip stalls, it's pretty nasty and violent, and it happens. And if you don't have enough altitude, you, you're, you're toast, man. She just spins right into the ground, and you got pieces of foam scattered all over the, the field, and we don't want that, okay? We don't want that. So let's go back to where I started, all right? Please don't fly in weather like this. Please. Don't do what Just Wing It did. <laughs> I did because I knew I could kind of get away with it. Plus, I had plan B. Out there is plan B. See, if you look at the flag right now, if you look at the flag, I would literally have to come in this way. And here's another thing. Because Cubs have such... I guess, you know, massive wing area and those big long wings, those big long cub wings. See, that's, that's what a cub looks like. Big long cub wings, okay? That wind catches them and woo right? So, so you gotta be careful. All right, hey, I've talked to you enough, man. I'm sure, sure you're all probably sick of it. Hey, hey, guys on the CZC, CZC thread, my, my, my friends and, and hopefully some other friends that are out there, but we haven't haven't uh, linked up yet via PM or whatever. Hey, it's nice talking with you, nice sharing with you a little bit about the Cub. I hope for some of you guys that are checking this big old plane out, because wow, it looks cool. It's just cool, I gotta have one. You know, uh, I hope maybe you learned a little bit too, and I wasn't too obtuse, and I try to make it fun and lively. So that being said, hey, thanks for watching, and uh, y'all have a great day.